Hey y'all, my name's Tyson, and this time around, let's combine 2D components with 3D components for even more versatile components. So the idea is one that it's been around for a while of combining, like I say, 2D components and 3D components, and then you put them into a nested component and turn different parts of it on and off via tags. So I want to show how we can build that out and hopefully show a few tips if you are trying to create your own. This is one of those things that can be used in a lot of different applications. So let's have a look. If you haven't seen these, here's the basic idea. So if I were to copy this, I'm going to toggle stamp mode on and stamp this let's say a few times around this hillside and we could take any of these and scale or rotate them but if we wanted to look at this from a perspective view embedded in this component is a simplified version of that tree as well as a far more detailed version. So depending on what you're doing and what stage your project is at, um, for your final rendering, you can turn on the detailed tree, but for a lot of cases, your, your performance will be greatly improved you know, with something like this. And then of course you can also utilize a plan view. So let's look at how we can create something like this. I'm going to remove a few of these and turn this off. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is create something like this, where you have added the tags that you need. And you might get away with just two, or you might add more tags than we have here. We have three. So create the tags that you're going to use and create a standard that you can use across similar objects. That way you can turn them all off and all on when you bring them on, bring them in. Let's create a version for this tree here. Now, to give credit, uh, this uh, is a tree as was the other one I found on the warehouse from this author, so thank you. It's a lovely tree, uh, works very well, but if we were to copy a bunch of these around, turn shadows on, it would definitely slow things down. So. I'm going to go to a front view, turn perspective off, and let's create a simplified version. And I will start with a simple rectangle that is basically larger than the tree and move it in front of the tree. Depending on your preferences, if you wanted a very detailed uh, and accurate representation of this tree or something like it, have a look at a plugin called Fredo Portrait. It will take a 3D object and create a 2D outline of it and then even cast the image back onto it. So it's pretty remarkable, but we're just gonna use a simple, uh, like say simplified version. So let me toggle X-ray mode on. And I'm gonna use freehand to trace this. Now, if we were to just start tracing, Let's say we trace this out. This would be a problem because it's referencing back there all of the geometry of the tree. However, when I use the freehand tool, I can tap the arrow keys to lock an axis. And for me, that will be green. So if I tap the left arrow key, now when I draw, because I started on the surface, it's staying in the green plane and it's going to stay on that surface. So that's we're going to use that to our advantage. So here I am. I'm going to draw on this surface. I want to be careful I don't start drawing back here on the tree, but I'm going to start on the surface and let me zoom about that far. Tap the left arrow key and start tracing this. Now, if you want, of course, you can take your time and create a far more uh, detailed version or simple version. Whatever is going to work for you, we're just going to create. 
something like this. Another thing to know, the freehand tool, the new versions of the freehand tool, you can change the segment count immediately after you've drawn a freehand curve. I'm not going to do that. In full transparency, the build I'm using seems to have a little bug where sometimes that works and sometimes it deletes your line. I suspect that won't be around for long, but just so you know, that's uh, something that is an option that you can change the segment count. I'm going to tap the left arrow key again and add just a little more detail to, and even though I tapped, I think it didn't work. So let me undo that. Make sure, there we go. I'm not too worried about the segment count since we're creating a 2D version anyway. I am tapping the left arrow key, but it's not always staying. So I want to make sure that I'm getting that. In any case, that's the idea. Now, if we look at this, I can take this simplified version and I will just copy it or copy it over to the side, but I've copied it on my keyboard and paste in place. There we go. Now I'm gonna make this a component. So I'm gonna triple click on that surface we just drew and make it a component. I'm gonna make this a face me component. So I'm gonna click always face the camera and name it something useful. Again, whether you have a naming convention that correlates to your tags or not, we'll just do something like that. And I'm gonna set the component axis at the base. All right, let's create that and move it into position basically lined up with the base of our full tree there. And I'm going to move that to our tag, which turns it off. Now I'm, I'm going to move this to our 3D tag eventually, but for now I'll leave it alone while I create a quick plan view. And to start, I'll just draw a circle um, we could just use a circle when I was going through uh, architecture school. Um, uh, this was a simplified way to draw a tree and plan, something like this. There's a lot of different symbols out there for drawing it. And like, um, like uh, our other version, we could spend time and create detail or not. We could use the freehand tool. We could come in and just be sure. We are drawing, if you just create a little bit more of an edge down here. If we wanted to. Oops. So I'm going to select this and make this a component as well. Now, I would want to set that up initially by changing the axis, but I didn't just to show that we can still do it after the fact. If I turn the hillside on, it's a useful thing, at least in this case, because landscape often, you're dealing with things that are not flat. If we move this around up here, we, we could have a, a situation where half of our, our symbol is buried. So I'm going to raise it up, you know, just a foot or two, some distance. And if I wanted, I can also draw a line uh, down so that we have a base to place this at, or even a line up to represent how tall the tree is. Up to you. And then I'm going to right click, replace the axis, place it at that base. 
Yep, let's change the axis. And we'll move this in place over here. And move it to our 2D plan. And then finally, we'll move this to our detailed. So we'll turn these back on. Select all of the pieces and make that <laughs> do something more, uh, do uh, create a better name than green tree. But whatever your, your naming convention will be. And I'm going to, again, set that component axis somewhere at the, uh, the base here so that when we bring it in, we're placing it where it's going to sit. Again, if you're doing furniture or a doorway, there's a lot of different ways you might use 2D and 3D components. So you might change that up a bit, but there we go. Let's take our two trees here and So you can create your own library of objects, um, something that would be useful for the type of work that you do. I'll turn perspective back on, and now we've got our simplified version. It's nice and snappy, and our more detailed version. And again, use this in different ways because you, know, you can use this for more than landscaping, but depending on how you use it, if you use it for furniture or vegetation, just have a similar naming convention. And then you can control all of these at once. Hopefully that was uh, useful to you. If you haven't seen that before, then give it a try. And if you have, hopefully you have some different ideas of how you might approach it. Uh, as always, we want the conversation to continue. So please let us know what other tips or tricks or questions you have or suggestions you have on this or other techniques. We'd love to hear your thoughts and please do subscribe and click that like button if you so like. Thanks, y'all. See you next time.